question we get asked a lot is what type of pressure bar do I need for my fountain pen? So let's try and answer that for you. What we've got here is a selection of the most popular pressure bars that you may need for your fountain pen. So let's go through them individually. First of all, to the left here, we've got what we term as a floating pressure bar, or some people call it an angle bar. These are commonly used on the likes of uh, Conway Stewart, Waterman pens, and what you'll see is they've got two sort of rails, if you like, to the side in the middle there. Now the reason being is that for a lot of Waterman and a lot of Conway Stewart pens, you'll notice that the lever has these two winged-like lugs to the end. Now them lugs there need to sit inside these, these crimped rails. And how it actually works is obviously um, the lever is always already on the pen and in effect when you install this particular pressure bar the, the two lugs actually sit inside the rails and slide on like so. So one of the reasons they call it a floating bar is in effect it looks as if it's floating but um, as I say this is a floating pressure bar again commonly used on Waterman's Conway Stewart with the two lugs on the end of the lever which slide into these two recesses so that's that one to the top there we have three sizes of what we term as J bars now to the left here first of all we've got the smaller size these are a four centimeter J bar now these particular J bars the small ones are normally used for this type of pen here and as you can see it's what we term as a combi pen which means it has a pencil and it has a nib to one side and these are as I say combi pens you can see it's got a lever there so the section inside is quite small and therefore needs a smaller type J bar the four centimeter J bar the next we've got a 5.4 centimeter J bar now therefore if you like what I term a sort of mid-size lever lever pens you can see all these pens are lever pens like so so a mid-size normal lever pen would use a 5.4 centimeter j bar and last but not least the largest size this one being the 6.2 centimeter is generally used for larger lever pens or senior lever pens in effect the way these are actually fitted obviously um, if the j bar on your pen is broken it'll fall out and then what you need to do is insert this j bar hold it to the end to the end here with some long nose pliers insert it sort of j bar or with a hook if you like first and make sure that it's aligned with the lever so that lever actually sits inside inside or in the middle of the bar and in effect what happens is when you exert pressure on the lever um, the bar actually sort of bends slightly and then puts pressure on the sack inside again they've got to be made sure that this is aligned with the lever on the pen but very oops a daisy very easily installed they simply slide into the pen barrel so they're what we term as j bars or some people will term them as as crook bars because they look like a shepherd's crook if you like and then what we have here is two sizes of quite simply these are termed as pressure bars again by pushing them the bar exerts pressure on the sack inside now the smaller size being this particular one is 6.6 .6 centimeters in length 
generally used for mid-size button filled fountain pens the largest size here is an 8.4 centimeter length and they're generally used for a larger size button pen or a senior button pen um, and then if we go to the left here we've got two sizes of what we term as an anchor bar or some people term them as a hanging bar now these are generally used if we just come along here oops a daisy used for what we term as the parker dofold pens now if we just come back to these here these are used again for a button filled fountain pen and again they're inserted like all these bars inside the barrel there the only difference with this particular one being that it actually sits inside the button like so so once you install the button um, these bars the top are actually they actually sit against the section to the top of the pen now sometimes you may find that you've got a pen um, with a friction fit section so um, sometimes they do actually exert pressure against against the sections now this particular pen which is in the process of being restored you can see we've got the sack here already installed on the section and you can see this particular section is a friction fit section now as I say they come in friction fit and also a screw fit now before you install the sack into these particular pens I've actually applied oops, a little bit of dusting powder now the dusting powder just um, saves it sticking inside the barrel and also helps with the installation of the bar so what we do we simply pop in the sack push on the section like so so that's actually fitted and um, incidentally make sure the the inside has been cleaned I use my cleaning barrel cleaning brush and also make sure the hole in the end there is also cleaned out you can use a brush or you can actually use a five millimeter drill bit by inserting a drill bit into the hole and just turning it around a couple of times you will clean any debris or ink that is actually left inside the hole but we've, as I say we've installed the sack in there now now at this point if I just get this particular bar here as you can see this is the same as the newer versions sorry the newer versions here this is actually the original um, the original anchor bar that was in this pen it's in good condition so there's no need to replace it but you can see it's in three in three sections and the reason it's called an anchor bar is that if we can just sort of put them together you'll notice to the very top there it's got this little hook if you like that hooks onto the the end of the barrel and anchors it inside now to install it what I actually use is this little piece of plastic now first of all what I'll do is install this piece of plastic inside against pushing it against the barrel the inside wall of the barrel and I just pop that in gently so that it doesn't snag the sack inside obviously if you used to push this straight in you'd find that it would actually snag or rip or whatever so you need to be a bit careful now at this point I will actually install the the bar make sure this particular section here is facing the sack or the flat bar and at this point we now just to the top of that piece of plastic I push and again against the barrel the inside wall of the barrel we push this bar all the way home once I've done that I can actually remove the piece of plastic and because we've applied a bit of dusting powder it slides slides in in and out quite comfortably here we have the button so all we need to do now is 
simply fit the button by pushing it into place and there we have it you can actually hear the air coming out of the sack so we know that is actually now installed correctly and again if we show you the the very end there you can see the little sort of hook section is actually anchored to the rim of the barrel now the beauty of the beauty regarding the anchor bars is that they exert no pressure against the section be it a friction fit be it a screw fit section these anchor bars as they state anchor to the end of the barrel so there's no pressure against the section whereas with these particular bars the pressure bars as we said earlier it does actually exert some pressure against the section so for me I find that the anchor bars are far better incidentally the anchor bars they actually also exert a lot more pressure onto the onto the sack so you get a better filling well a much better filling capacity with these particular bars so that's how you actually fit fit them particular bars as I say they're called the anchor bars and what we do we just simply pop the the, uh, the blind cap on like so so they're the standard pressure bars obviously there's other pressure pressure bars available but these are the standard ones and these are the only one that you may actually need incidentally if we just come back to the floating bar if for some reason it's actually broken or the lugs on the lever are actually sort of broken off if you like what you need to do is obviously replace the lever which can be quite difficult for some people if that's the case whereas the lugs are broken off and they won't fit onto this particular bar what you can actually use is the J bars the J bars will then fit in by sliding in and the pen will become usable um, I mean if possible obviously replace the lever if you can but if you can you can replace that particular bar with a J bar to actually make the pen well get it in working in working order so they're the pressure bars that you may need sort of measure your pen see what size you need and then order the correct pressure bar for your pen so i hope that's answered your question which j bar or sorry which pressure bar do i need for my fountain pen